I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that's just the way I do it. I don't do it because it's, I feel like it's regimented. I don't believe that God said, you have to do it this way. Even uh, if we say baptizing in the name of Jesus, it still represents what? God. The tr God. triune God. God. So either way that we baptize, you're baptizing in the name of the triune God. Right? Even if you just say in the name of Jesus, Jesus represents the triune God. Right? So either way, you're saying Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It, it's all the... It's now, all if somebody the baptized and said, in the name of God, I baptize you, I might have an issue with that. Because God can be anything. Right. Well, we he can be anything. And I've yeah. challenged my people. I said, look, when you have conversations with folks, don't just use God. Don't, don't right. say God. Use Jesus. Yeah. That clarifies it above every other religion. And when I baptize, I do Father, Son, Holy Spirit, just because that's the way I was taught. They didn't say you have to do this or it doesn't count. You know, that's yeah, I don't. I think you could you could say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah, or 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 in the name of Jesus, and it doesn't null any kind of baptism. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't get angry because preacher didn't say Yeah, that. he didn't say right. Was, uh, <laughs> and it's like trying to. It's like saying you got a combination that you've got to open before you can get in, you know? And if you hit the wrong number, then I'm sorry. Let, you say, <laughs> but it's not a combination. This, I'm going to go over this. And listen, I don't agree with much of the Catholic Church theology and doctrine. I'm we'll just telling you. But recently, there was a story about, an, uh, about a priest or archbishop or somebody who had been baptized for years. And he was using one of the words... They, they tell them what to say when baptizing. And he was he was leaving out one word. It's a very I don't know which word it was. But the Catholic Church annulled all those baptisms. <laughs> said the church said, those don't count. Now, I don't think those baptisms count anyway because they're babies, for the most part. But but who's to say that if I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or Jesus? If somebody has the authority to come and say, that ain't count. You know? That's that's God's authority. And I baptize in Jesus' name. And just what he said, it represents the triune God. Uh, I'll be what they're going to do with those folks. <laughs> I mean, for the Catholic Church, it's a big deal because those people aren't saved, so to speak. Their salvation, our salvation, and, and different. I, I think I'd add, too, because some people think that you're not part of the church until you get baptized. Yeah. And, and that's not true. Right. The baptism will put you in the church. Salvation does. Salvation, does. Yeah. salvation makes you part of the church. And, and Jesus is the one that makes you part of the church. Because it's His church. It's His body. It's His body. It's not. It's, baptism will not put you in the church. Baptism is, like I said, it's a representation of saying, hey, I want to show everybody what, I, what God's done inside I want to show everybody right. publicly what God's done outside. Right. From the outside. Right. So it's just proclaiming outward what, what God's done inward. That makes sense? Who else? <laughs> Come on, guys. Nobody has a question. More time to <laughs> it could be anything. It don't have to be baptism. May, may I consider uh, the issue of baptism? Another controversy is the um, how many do we in the water? So what now? How many do we dip in the water? How many times? How many times, yes. One. One. <laughs> mm -hmm. so and, 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 and when you look at baptize, it says that means baptizo, right? Which means full immersion. And it doesn't say full immersion three times. Exactly. You don't read anything that says baptize thrice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it just says baptize. So it just means to dump, to, to immerse, and that's once. I don't like to do it more than one time. I mean, I've done people more than once, but that was because I was messing with them. Yeah. <laughs> just to make sure. Because I've done them, I, 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 I baptize them right, and then they get up, and I say, I don't think that worked. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm messing with it. It's people I know. It's people I know. My brother, brother holds me down in the dark too. Yeah. <laughs> I told one guy, I said, I'm going to hold you down 15 minutes. Make sure I hold you. <laughs> but of course, I'll be playing. Yes, sir. At what age should the person be baptized? I'm sorry? At what age? At what age? When you get saved. When you get saved. I'm you saying there's no age to it. When you get saved. Get baptized. My, my, 
My, right. um, yeah, my son, salvation is my love. son, and my oldest daughter both got saved at age four. They do. I, I mean, listen. And some people, I, I know a pastor friend of mine that wouldn't baptize kids under six because he said they don't believe. They, they can't. They can't know. Who might say that the Holy Spirit can't talk to a four year old? So I trust. And as a parent, if I baptize them at four years old, which we did. I'm going to keep an eye on them and pray for them. And here's what happens a lot of times when young kids or even teenagers get saved. Sometimes later on, they'll, they'll revisit that salvation experience and they'll say, you know, I'm not sure that I got saved. Because sometimes they get saved because their friend went forward and they want to go with them. Or it was, it was just a thing to do or whatever. But the, the, the big thing for them is they're unsure, they're unsettled in their heart. And so I've never told somebody, well, you got saved and baptized years ago, we're not going to do it again. I will let them do it again for their own assurance. Whether they got saved when they were 4 or 40, it doesn't matter. They know they got saved. Does that make sense? So I, I let the Holy Spirit tell them that they're saved or not. My son and my daughter, both at 4 years old, I trust their word. They, I mean, Braylon can still tell you, Brenna can still tell you today where they were, what they were doing, who they were with, and, and what the process was. Bristol got saved last uh, August. She came into our, we've been praying for her for a long time, she's 10. She came into our room and, and we had conversations and she, no, I'm not ready. No, why not? I'm, no, I don't know. I'm just not ready. Okay. Braylon had been doing some things that were wrong and we were in the middle of disciplining our son. And Bristol opens the door and said, I've got something to say. And and I, well, I wasn't in the mood for Bristol to come in and I didn't know what she did. I was just not in a good mood because I had to deal with my son at the moment. He's a good kid. He just had a bad moment. And we said, Bristol, you can't just barge in here. And she goes, I just got saved. <laughs> Changed the whole atmosphere. But she, we've been praying with her for a long time. And my, my final prayer for her was, Lord, you need to speak to her in the way that she understands that she knows she needs Jesus. You know what Spirit did? I didn't push it. I, we didn't force it. And she came and she goes, I just felt like God told me it was time to get saved. And I went in my room. I, I asked Jesus to forgive me. We praise the Lord. We cried with her. We prayed with her. We, we baptized her. So, you know, I think at the age when they decide they know what's right and wrong, they know the difference between right and wrong. I would just, whatever age that is. I would just add, have a conversation with them. Oh yeah. Oh, Especially if it's if it's not your child, have a conversation with them and, and make sure they understand. Because sometimes, like you said, kids just want to be baptized. In my church, I've had to tell some kids and their mom and, and dad, I no, I can't, I can't do it. Um, because I've had a conversation with their child and their child couldn't relate anything about knowing anything about salvation. Right. And if they can't uh, articulate something about salvation, then they don't understand it. So, so, and I'm okay with telling parents no. If, if I feel like, because I don't want to give them false hope if I know for sure that they don't. And most and, parents will be good. Yeah, and, and, and the parents have always been good about it. You know, they took my advice with it. And, and I mean, my son was seven. And I kind of had the same experience with Brett. He was seven, and and he's he's heard about the gospel. He's heard the gospel. I've had we adopted him when he was three, and he's heard the gospel ever since. And one Wednesday night, I was closing the church up, and he said, "Daddy, I need to talk to you." I'm like, "Okay, what's what's up?" He said, "Daddy, I need to get saved." And I said, "I said, well, son, why ain't you done it before now?" He said, well, Daddy, it wasn't time then. It's time now. <laughs> and and, and, and we, when we talked, and he got saved. And I baptized him. Because who's going to say, who am I to say? You know what I mean? He, he, knew, exactly, he knew exactly what he was doing. He, he didn't rush into it because he, he knew before it wasn't time. But this was in the middle of the night, closing up church. He said, Daddy, it's time. And so I'm not going to tell him he's not saved. Because he was able to articulate that. And he knew what Jesus did for him. 
He knew that he, he, he needed Jesus. I mean, what else am I going to say? Just be wise in your counsel. But, be, but definitely counsel with them. Don't just baptize them because. Yeah. I would say that. I've, I've even had parents come to me and, and ask me, uh, would I talk to their child? Mm -hmm. Because their child would come to them and say, I think I need to be baptized. I, 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 think I got saved. Mm -hmm. And so then you could go to the child and counsel the child. You have to be careful, too, of not to put words in their mouth. Yeah, Correct? absolutely. You know, so let not, them talk. Yeah, let them, them talk. talk. And, and if, then you can discern whether or not it's a thing they just want to get baptized mm -hmm. or they really have met the Lord Jesus and they've been saved, they've found salvation. <coughs> then you can do it. And there will be times soon when children will respond to the gospel away from their mom and dad. Yes. I've had them raise their hand in the service or whatever. And I've gone to the mom and dad afterwards and say, hey, listen, I just want you to know, little Johnny indicated he wanted to be saved. So I'm, I'm telling you, and the reason I do that is because the parents need to be involved in that conversation. Moms and dads are the pastors of the home. Dads, really. But, and I say, y'all need to have that. And sometimes they'll say, we've been talking about that at home. Or, yeah, he's asked some questions. So I'll let the parents know ahead of time that he's thinking about it or she's thinking about it. And that kind of primes them up and creates more conversation. And generally, when that happens, either they did get saved or they're about to get saved. God's working on their heart. Right. So the only prerequisite for so, yeah. for self, uh, baptism is salvation. Yeah, there's it. no age, there's no, yeah. just, they're saved. I would baptize a baby. No, I would baptize a baby. baby. I, I, I lady in my church was 72 years old yeah. and baptized for 72. It was a joyous day, trust me. And then a couple of years later, her husband, who was like 75, yeah. he got saved yeah. and they got baptized. And I'm going to tell you, it was another big old day of joy and tears. We all can feel that someone pulled back up with tears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Yes, I need the clarity of Jesus' application. We see in the unity. I agree. I see. So let me do BC. BC. Oh, the BC and AD. BC in AD. AD means the end. What are you asking? Go ahead. What I'm asking is when did the DC cease for this? When did the AD start? Okay, when does BC end? When does AC AD start? Is that what you said? Yes. That's a calendar issue. It's, it's not we, a biblical. Yeah, it's not a Bible. It's not a Bible issue. Some, some people say it's before Christ, after after death, yeah. and that's not what that's it stands for. No. Because if you if you look at Scripture and and you research the the dates, then that means uh, Jesus was born four four years after. Four. Four years after he's supposed to be born. You know what I'm saying? So because it's like four BC. Four BC. You, you get what I'm saying? And don't hold me to 4 BC. I'm, I'm just off the top of my head. I know it was after. I, I know. It was, I, I know it was after that point. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's really a calendar question. Four BC. I no, I'm just throwing it out there. You were saying, he's exactly. saying 4 BC or 4 AD was just a yeah. was just an example he was giving. I was just throwing an example out there. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. A, B, and B, C, that's just a calendar thing. It's, it's not a biblical thing. They, they kind of base it loosely on the life of Christ. It's like yeah, but it's not complete. When he teaches you, it means after the death of Jesus Christ. Then when Jesus was born in 4 B, C. I don't understand. I, I'm not understanding. I don't understand. I apologize. I don't understand. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Is AD, AD doesn't mean after death. It doesn't mean before Christ. I'm not sure if I have this thing. I think there's some two questions. What does AD and BC mean? Oh, what do you And this next question is, uh, since there is AD and there is BC. So if you count down from uh, 398 uh, BC, BC, uh -huh. you come down, come down to 2 BC, uh -huh. you come to 1 BC, from 1 BC, 
where Q jump is, is there a zero percent? Is there a zero percent? Then there's a one percent. One. 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 If you jump to zero, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Zero. I can tell you, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Edit that part. Get that in back. Okay, so it's zero and who must he baptize or who has a right to baptize? Okay, I'm saying who must he baptize or who has a right to baptize? Oh, who can baptize? Who can baptize? I, I generally, I generally baptize, but I've let dads baptize their sons. It doesn't have to be me. There, there's, no, there's no qualification in the Bible for who baptizes. It just says oh, that yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you were not you didn't got baptized. He was he was baptized by Matthew. No, he was not No, I'm like Fred. I'm not dad. Yeah, I'm not dad. I'm not dad. I'm not dad. i it doesn't matter a whole lot. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a battle. I don't think I was going to. I assume so. I don't have a problem with that. I think uh, I thought you got better down more. I usually I usually let men do it because it is it's like a leadership role thing right, yeah. for me. I normally don't let women do it. I've never had a woman do it. You know, because why I let the fathers do it is because it's a leadership thing. The the father is supposed to now it's like the father taking responsibility of his child's maturity now. That's why I let fathers do it, because he's the leader of that home. And he should be taking responsibility of now saying, uh, hey, I'm baptizing you. And when you think about what it says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it, you, you can take it, it's saying I'm submersing you. And that's what he should be doing at home, submersing them in, in God's Word, submersing them in, in who Jesus is. You get what I'm trying to say? And so that's why we let fathers do it, because of the leadership role that they have in their home. And I, me personally, if it's not a father or a grandfather, or, or I, I would even let a husband uh, baptize his wife because it's a leadership. But if it's not those, then I'll do it. Then I'll do it. I don't think God's going to say, well, it doesn't count. Because <laughs> what's happening? I just think when we let fathers and husbands do it, it, it just means more to what their responsibility is at home. And the reason, one of the, and a good example of why it's not that that is important for the pastor to do it is the whole time that Jesus walked on earth, many people were baptized, but Jesus didn't Jesus baptize. Jesus never baptized anyone. Yeah, all his disciples did. Yeah. yeah, Jesus never baptized anybody. Ever. Yes, sir. I have two questions, maybe one challenge. So I start with the question, I have a question which is found in Matthew chapter 17, verse 27, about text. Uh, when Jesus said to Peter, go to the river and, uh, and you catch a fish, then if you open the, uh, the mouth, you find a coin. Then you pay text for me and for you. So my question is, why did Jesus pay for Peter only? And him. Why this he why this he has 12 disciples? I thought I think he paid for all the disciples. I don't think he paid for just him. I have to read it for you. What was the reference? What's the reference? Matthew what? Matthew 17 is verse 27. 27. 17, 27. Thank you. 